Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Leslie presents. And now your host, Paul Leslie. Welcome, Uncle Jim Mayer, the bass player for the Peter Mayer Group, who also tours with Jimmy Buffett. And as of late, Uncle Jim has a new album, Funky as a Diaper. Funky as a Diaper. Ladies and gentlemen, Uncle Jim Mayer is here to swap stories and play a few songs for us. How are you doing, Jim? I'm doing great, Paul. Thank you for making the trip down to my clandestine hotel, which will <laughs> remain unnamed at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Recently, this new album has been described as something that could be geared towards adults, but children would enjoy as well. How did you get the idea to take this particular path in your music? Well, um, the, it's kind of funny how it came about because we moved to Nashville about six years ago, uh, Pete, uh, Peter, Roger, and myself. And the original idea of moving to Nashville was that we would kind of get involved in the studio scene there and uh, maybe write a couple massive country hits. You know, that might be nice. And uh, so... We have a long history of songwriting with Jimmy, et cetera, and long story short, I would work on these country songs for a long time and demo them, and uh, I discovered that I'm not a country songwriter. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, these guys, you know, they're very friendly in Nashville. They, don't, they won't, it, the songs didn't suck. I mean, they, you know, they're just, they're just not country hit material. And which is fine with me. And uh, meanwhile, I was writing songs like Schmopey, which also <laughs> works in this context, by the way, as long as you guys take the backup vocals. And uh, I have 20, I have over 20 nieces and nephews. And so I would, uh, you know, I would just be hanging out singing, I need a toilet <laughs> and stuff like that. And then my, my brother-in-law would come back and he said, Jim, can we please not sing I need a toilet? Because that's all they're singing all day. Anyway, long story short, I, I love kids, and I love writing kids' material, but I actually don't listen to that much kids' music. It's just, I'm sure there's a lot of great stuff out there, but I, I personally don't find it that, it's just not that interesting. And I don't know if you guys remember the old Warner Brothers cartoons. I, I do promise that each answer will be a little bit less than one hour. Um, <laughs> The old Warner Brothers cartoons, I loved them because they were fun for adults. There, and there was a lot of stuff that today they would say, "Oh, that's way over the kid's head," but they were fun for adults and and also fun for kids. And so, really, what you're hearing on my CD is me goofing around with my nieces and nephews and doing what comes totally naturally for for, for me. And I, I've really seen that in Jimmy Buffett's music. I mean, I remember years ago I needed some help with some lyrics, and I said, "Well." You know, for this kind of music, I mean, lyrics aren't my first thing. And he goes, well, those <laughs> those come pretty naturally to me. And I, I've seen him write for, like, for Banana Wind. He'll just sit there uh, uh, for uh, Jamaica Mistake of Lyrics or, or uh, Overkill Lyrics. I saw him write all those lyrics in 20 minutes and just sit there and just, okay, boys, I got another verse. And so we need to find whatever we do naturally. And that's that's what I've been doing with this children's stuff. And it, it I wrote Schmoopy in about 20 minutes. And it's just fun. It's just fun. Well, uh, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> well, you answered it. Okay, Excellent. good. Well, I can imagine uh, that growing up, there was children's music being a part of your life. Um, growing up, what? Wh who were your favorite children's music artists that you listened to back then? Well, we we grew up in India, and we but but really, some of the music was the same, and it was Burl Ives who I just loved. I loved the sound of his voice. We had a Hans Christian Andersen uh, record, and they were really more fairy tales or story tales. And he did a Brothers Grimm uh, album that Pete and I used to just sit around and listen to, and he would do all these different voices. And and we just absolutely loved that stuff. So that's pretty much Burl Ives and Hans Christian Andersen, uh, the Beatles, Stevie Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> all those guys, all those children's music artists. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure that uh, growing up in India, um, coming from Asia myself, I can imagine that uh, being an MK certainly influenced your taste in music. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about how India has made the Jim Mayer we know today. Oh, yeah. It's a great question. Um, well, MK being missionary kid, um, 
You know, India is funny because I think what it brought to me was a sense of awe, kind of a sense of wonder, and maybe I guess um, you could even say a sense of reverence. People are very respectful in uh, people are very respectful in India, and it's a strange country because you see really poor, I mean, just you know, just awful poverty. But at the same time, they're very dignified. They're very respectful, and and they really have a sense of wonder at the um, how should I say it? And I'm I'm just saying this not to get massively philosophical, but I talk about it because it's kind of the basis of my whole, all of my music. It was, my mission statement with my music is finding joy and wonder in everyday life. And what I find in the people of India is that they kind of have a sense of wonder or reverence for the mysteries in life. Because we, you know, that's the thing, you know, we grow up in so much comfort here in this country, and we, hey, man, I got all my favorite TV programs and my favorite food and all that kind of stuff, and we forget that there are still so many mysteries out there that we can't even begin to understand. And I think that's the stuff that makes life fun, is the stuff you're not, you know, the, the I don't know stuff. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. So with such a diverse collection of songs, um, both of you working with PM uh, and the Coral Reefer Band and uh, this new album, uh, where do these song ideas come from? They, um, you know, it's funny because uh, just the other day I had, a, had another song idea, and I've got, if you look on my computer, I've got about 60 so <laughs> children's songs in progress. Um, and... I actually don't know where they come from, but I know that the, they arrive. And Peter Mac and I, we all, Mac Mac and Allie, we all have this attitude about songwriting, that um, that the song is already written. This is actually something Russ Kunkel talks about, too. I guess the simplest analogy would be a crossword puzzle, where you know that there's an answer <laughs> to the puzzle, and it's a specific word you're looking for, and it's already there. There's that sense. So in Mac... Uh, what Mac will say, like when he wrote uh, the, the song all these years, is he said, well, that song was floating around Nashville, and I just happened to be up late one night and it landed in my head. And Pete talks about being around. So, But but in, but in where the songs come from, I'll tell you a good example is Shmoopy. Shmo <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a serious song there, Shmoopy. Uh, but but seriously, Shmoopy is a term of endearment, and I got it from watching Seinfeld, right off of Seinfeld. And this is hilarious. I did a radio interview in St. Louis um, and I didn't get into an argument with a guy, but, but he said, well, shmoopy, that's a legitimate Yiddish term. And I, I'm like, no, believe me, <laughs> I've got Jewish relatives and that is not a Yiddish term. If it is, somebody please correct me. Shmoopy is, I got it from Seinfeld, of course, when George is in love and they start doing <laughs> cuddly talk and everyone's got their shmoopy or honey cakes or whatever it is. And, uh, the little, uh, niece, Margaret, her name is Margaret Henry. She's on the cover of Funky as a Diaper. Uh, the relatives were visiting, and she is. She makes the Gerber baby look like you know Joe Piscopo or something. I mean, she is. <laughs> she is so cute. It's just you just melt into butter uh, w when you're around her. And and if there's anybody who's a schmoopy, it's Margaret Henry. And and that song was written on a Sunday afternoon, and I was playing with her, and she was in her diapers. And I just, it just, you know, schmoopy sh is a word I use when I want to say I love you. Schmoopy! You know, schmoopy. It, it just, you know, I just had to say schmoopy. And then I thought, you know, and then, and, and so, you know, you kind of, uh, I mean, that's the way my brain just works, is melodies kind of land in it. And you can pretty much, I've been doing this with grade school kids, where we will write a song together at my shows. And it's pretty much name anything and I'll just start thinking of a you know carpet is pretty carpet is nice it's green not at all the color of eyes I love my carpet you know just stuff like that that's just the way my brain works and uh and so I started thinking about schmoopy and I thought well and, and so the trick with songwriting is you get the initial idea and sometimes you'll get the initial idea. You'll have no idea where to go with it. Schmoopy, it seemed obvious because we, we, we always in our, well, to me, the gen, you know, it's kind of like a rat is not a schmoopy, you know? <laughs> I mean, like that you would not think of calling a rat schmoopy, you know, that's just doesn't feel cuddly at all. And I'm sure to a mama rat, the little baby rat is really cute and cuddly, but to me, it's not. But I thought about how when you have little kids around, 
it's the muddy feet, the wagging tail of the dog, the, uh, you know, the pickle juice, the onion skins, the, you know, you step in dog dew in the grass. I mean, it's all that weird stuff in life that when we, we all know as part of family life of either, I mean, hey, all of us have either been a kid or we have kids or we know kids. There's always a little bit of mud involved, you know. So I had to. So that was the way I decided to do the development of it. And uh, yeah, and then that's you just kind of chisel it on out, and it comes on out. So with all these ideas that come across mayonnaise, onion skins, what is <laughs> what's the wildest song idea that has ever occurred to you? Oh man, um, you know, uh, I'm forgetting. I, I've got uh, my my friend sent me some questions, and that was that was a question that she had asked too. And what one of them was, uh, and I, and this is only a title. I would actually, I see the way I write is I come up with song ideas and then I record them as soon as I have them, and then I forget them. So like, sometimes the next week or the next morning, I'll wake up, I will literally have no memory of writing the song, and I that's why I record everything I write because I'll go back and I'll listen. I'm like, so I. I've been thinking about that question. <laughs> I just want to real quickly look through my song titles, and I'm going to tell you some song titles, okay, <laughs> that may may follow that thing, okay? Uh, I Love My Nose. <laughs> Great. Uh, let's see. Uh, Permission to Breathe. This is another one. Uh, there's one I like, uh, which is Fear of Strawberries. Um, <laughs> uh, and uh, I love my nose. Um, there's another one. Oh, uh, let's see. Uh, um, let's see. Too much peppercorn. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> and the ever famous, where did my toothbrush go? <laughs> I have asked that question before. <laughs> if, if you guys are anything like me, I want to know where the hell is my toothbrush. I mean, these are serious problems. And, you know, Too Much Peppercorn, that's actually a song I can sing real quick. That hopefully will be on the next album. But Too Much Peppercorn, I was flying home from tour. And, you know, we get so used to luxury problems. And and uh, this is a good example of a luxury problem. And this is, we all do them. I know I complain about stuff that, that people less fortunate than I would say, please give me a break. And I remember one of those days when we were staying at the uh, Four Seasons Grand Hotel in West Palm Beach with marble floors and, you know, trinkets on the pillows and blah, blah, blah. And the complaint for the day was, you know, the maids, they just come to the room too much. <laughs> that is, so I found that, you know, to, to, to quote a comedian, you know, the mind is a terrible thing. Uh, you know, we can find ways. So too much peppercorn was, uh, I'm having a too much peppercorn kind of day. You know, I'm in a, I'm in the luxury restaurant and they just put a little too much peppercorn kind of day. <laughs> Waiter, won't you please take my salad away? <laughs> <laughs> I'd much rather have a pickle juice parfait. I've got a too much peppercorn kind of day. So, uh, since you're on the road with not only Jimmy Buffett's Coral Reefer Band, and you're also performing with your brother Peter mm -hmm. as part of the Peter Mayer Group, how do you find time to just be Uncle Jim? Wow. Yeah, that's a great that's a great question. I've got this wonderful problem of too much work. <laughs> <laughs> Between engineering Pete's albums and touring with Pete, touring with Jimmy, I love being a coral reefer um, and hanging with the fans and doing Uncle Jim. And I think uh, what uh, what I've been working with, uh, especially with my brother Pete, uh, because the, the Jimmy gig is not on a come-and-take basis. You know, it's not like, Jimmy, I'll see you next year, buddy, you know, whatever. Uh, and and uh, at least not right now. Um when he calls, I'm I'm there, and so I think what what I'm looking at doing in the the coming year is finding probably not being on all of my brother's gigs and probably having to make the difficult choice of of opting out of some of them. So I do have more time for Uncle Jim, because uh, what I found is you just there's just not time for everything. And as I, I uh, we can get into this later, but I've got so many ideas for things that I want to do with children and from. TV shows to, I mean, there's just, and I, I did a gig a couple weeks ago at a school in uh, Illinois, and 
I'm telling you, man, I drove out of that parking lot and it, I had the greatest feeling in my heart. I mean, I was like, this is what I want to do. So it's a wonderful, it's again, it's another luxury problem. Uh, but, but it's something that's actually been really challenging for me because uh, trying to decide, well, what gig do I not do or what, and I want to be fully supportive of Peter and because I really believe in what he does and try to support him in any way I can, whether it's engineering or strategizing or, or uh, whatever, and, and being on as many gigs as I can. And at the same time, you know, there's only so much time in a year and, and I actually want to start doing more Uncle Jim. So I think that's what it's probably going to, you know, end up being. And I want all the fans to, because uh, sometimes people come up to me and they're like, where were you? And I'm like, man, Peter Mayer is a genius, whether I'm standing next to him or not. <laughs> and, and, you know, uh, so that's, that's for now, that's probably where some of the time's going to come from. But I think also I'm just going to s- squeeze it a little bit, keep, keep pushing the time because it's, I love doing what I do. And you mentioned playing for this elementary school, and uh, mm-hmm. I understand they had an entire Uncle Jim Day, and the school was in Lexington, Illinois. Could you tell us a little bit about Uncle Jim Day? Yeah, I'd love to tell you about that. I tell you what, this this school, it totally blew me away. And what I'm going to be doing, I've, I've just been kind of uh, getting back into Jimmy Buffett tour mode for the last couple weeks. And what I want to do over the next month, um, m- meaning June, uh, June 2004 is is uh, put some of the things on the website what they did I actually videotaped the pretty much the whole day and uh, the first thing that blew me away I walked up to the school and they had a big uh, uh, big uh, not mural what do you call those big plastic a banner thank you a banner um, that hangs on the wall and it said you know Lexington Illinois Parent Teachers Club welcomes Uncle Jim for Uncle Jim Day and then they had this big poster with all the teachers i mean this flipped me out man okay they had like 16 teachers and they had diaper pictures of all the teachers and they said who is funky as a diaper it's a brilliant <laughs> idea and they, the kids were supposed to guess who their teacher was so uh so that was part of it they made a full size uncle jim statue out of duct tape <laughs> that freaked me out that's cool and i let me tell you brother I drove home with that thing in my station wagon. It was laying, Uncle Jim was laying on top of the upright base. <laughs> and it looks a little bit like the Tin Man from Wizard of Oz, you know. And uh, this thing, the whole darn thing is made out of duct tape. Uh, in each of the classes, the preschoolers made a poster that's about four feet by three feet. And uh, it's the poster says, Funky as a diaper and has little baby uh, cutout dolls. And then they folded up Kleenex for the diapers. <laughs> I mean, these kids completely tripped me out. I mean, I almost, I walked in, I got all the, oh my God, what are they? I was so touched. It was really sweet. So the day consisted of, and I'm looking at actually doing, all you teachers out there, I'm actually looking at doing this a lot more next year because what it does is it, is it gives me a chance to get one on one with the kids, the kids. And, um, I do three workshops during the day. And then I do an afternoon show, and I'm actually wanting to work it out, some of these things where I can do an evening show uh, with the parents and the kids together. And one of the fun things, I don't want to give away all the blasting things we did because they were just, it was such a blast. Uh, but one of the real fun things we did that day was we did it, I called it a dance extravaganza. I didn't want to have it be a dance contest because Lord knows we had enough competition in our culture, but a dance extravaganza. And I had a little girl come up and uh, the teacher, the 16 teachers and the principal of the school got up to dance. And the little girl would hit a button and it was like a jukebox and, and it went from progressive levels of difficulty and it started with in the mood uh, glenn miller in the mood progressed to Jimi hendrix <laughs> james brown john coltrane i mean it was just bizarre but it's it's the kids loved it and <laughs> and the kids loved watching their principal and their their teachers dancing and having fun and uh so I got it on videotape, and anyway, it's th- that's pretty much Uncle Jim Day, and I thought if they only do <laughs> <laughs> what they're in for. But uh, no, we, we had a really great time. And uh, I understand you also have a uh, dream to one day have possibly an Uncle Jim TV show. That's correct. I, uh, yeah, my mind's kind of always in Uncle Jim mode and uh, just a lot of foolishness. And the idea, well, you know, 
Mr. Rogers, God bless him. He's he's gone now. And and um, I was cooking with a friend the other day, and we were just have being absolutely silly in the kitchen. And I thought, you know, wouldn't it be cool to have a kids cooking show and to to have Uncle Jim cook with the kids and and actually have the kids serve their parents a meal at the end of the show mm. and invite the kids and the parents in and and just to make a make cooking fun and we'd have complex recipes like peanut butter sandwiches <laughs> <laughs> chocolate chip cookies you know the real hard stuff um but i also had the idea of i i've got some friends who who come uh from the jewish heritage and and there's a thing called a mitzvah i'm pretty sure i'm correct about this a mitzvah is an act of kindness that you do and but you don't the, the trick is is you should not be discovered is that am i correct about it? i'm pretty sure it's called a mitzvah and it's an mm. act of and it's an act of kindness but but the whole trick is it only counts if you're not discovered so part of the tv show would be that every show we would have a mitzvah mission which is <laughs> we would need to do an act of kindness to somebody else and have it not be discovered like plant flowers in the elderly ladies you know uh yard next door do do something you know clean up some trash or i don't know what uh uh but but anyway just do something fun so i've got a lot of ideas for that show and and uh i've been uh scott bryan is a wonderful video uh videographer i guess that's the word for it that plays percussion with peter and so scott uh and i are plan on working on that also um that's the idea right now we'll see <laughs> so with all of these uh these visions and some of them are becoming a reality here's a hypothetical if you could wave a magic wand and make anything happen mm. what would you make happen that is a great great question um I think I really want to be able to reach a lot more kids I really think that's what I want to do and um, I think a magic wand would probably on my personal front would probably involve uh, you know having some kind of uh, network supported or syndicated TV show uh, for kids um, and and probably touring more with the children's thing I really I really love doing that I think on the you know on the world front, I, 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 you know, go along with the, you know, why can't we just be friends <laughs> mentality and, and, uh, really, uh, hope obviously like all of us do that, that we can resolve conflicts internationally as soon as possible. But, but just on the more realistic, uh, you know, what can I do today front? I, I really, uh, want a chance to reach as many kids as possible. And I've got ideas for, working with teenagers too it's funny lately i've just you know teenagers in this society are are they're given so many messages man what the heck are they supposed to do with all the messages that they're getting you know and and i just did lately i've really been wanting to uh to work with teenagers too so i'll, I'll add that on top of the pile yeah so with all these projects in the works what uh what else is coming i understand you have the the children's book that you've been working mm -hmm. on what what's what's coming new in the Uncle Jim world? Well, it's probably the the book is has actually been on hold a little bit, and apologize to all the fans for all the. Uh, it'll be out on Thursday. It'll be out next week. It'll be out next year. Uh, for all of that silliness, uh, I, that has turned into a much bigger project, mainly because I, I had the whole book written. Uh, and then I met with uh, actually a Hollywood screenwriter that's written some some action hits with Harrison Ford, et cetera. And, and he read the book, really liked it, um, but made some suggestions about characters that needed to be added. And I really agreed with him. I thought, you know, you're right. So so that's going to take a little bit of rewriting. And it's one of those things I can like going to India. I can do it, but I need a full month. You know. <laughs> uh, but I, I think the next thing you're going to see from me is going to be. Um, and I'm not sure which is going to come first, but it's either going to be another Uncle Jim album, which I've got, I'm really chomping at the bit to do, uh, or an Uncle Jim DVD. You know, it's going to be one of those things. And, and, uh, if I have my way, it'll be out before the end of the year, but I am not <laughs> making any promises, but I really want to get something else. A lot of parents are emailing me saying, please come out with another CD. <laughs> <laughs> there have been a few times when I've listened to your CD and I've been in my car or whatever, and I've looked up. And I've seen a smile in the sky looking down at me. There you go. So for all the people that may have never heard Uncle Jim, 
would you possibly play this song yeah. so that they can look up and see the moon or the sun smiling? There you go. Yeah, I love playing this song. Um, yeah, this is called The Smile in the Sky, and it's uh, it's meant for those, just like Paul was saying, it's meant for those great days you're out on the beach or backyard or, or whatever, and uh, yeah, it just feels like something's smiling at you. This is called The Smile in the Sky. Stop and think about the sky above Covering this whole world with love Did you ever stop and wonder what it's made of? Tell me about the sky above The sky is made up of 78% nitrogen and 21% oxygen Light is bent when it enters the atmosphere So that the heavenly bodies are not as they appear There's a smile in the sky from the sun all day and the moon at night They're winking at you as they go by There's a smile in the sky Yes, there is Did you ever stop and think about the earth below? It's way too big for you to hold it all Riding round space on a blue-green ball Tell me about the earth below Earth has an estimated mass of 6.6 sextillion tons. Its shape is not quite a true sphere. In fact, if you hang upside down from a satellite, you will see something remarkable. There's a smile in the sky from the sun all day and the moon at night. They're winking at you as they go by. There's a smile in the sky. What does a smile sound like? Did you ever stop and think about the ocean blue? You couldn't swim across it if you wanted to. All those creatures now, what do they do? Tell me about the ocean blue. The world ocean has an area of about 139 million square miles with an average depth of 12,000 feet. That's a lot of water. <laughs> Have you ever noticed that the waves are waving at you? Fins to the left. There's a smile in the sky from the sun all day and the moon at night. They're winking at you as they go by. There's a smile in the sky. Say what? There's a smile in the sky from the sun all day and the moon at night. They're winking at you as they go by. There's a smile in the sky. They're winking at you as they go by. There's a smile in the sky. <laughs> so, Thank Jim, you. is there really a smile in the sky? Oh, absolutely, man. Yes. <laughs> you know those bumper stickers that say, if you're not angry, you're not paying attention, man? <laughs> I, I say, you know, if you're not smiling, you're not paying attention. It's whatever you choose to pay attention to, so it's there, yeah. <laughs> Well, we could all use a little Uncle Jim in our life. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. So, uh, well, this album has uh, so many different musicians that lended their talents to it. Mm. Um, could you tell us a little bit about some of the musicians that lended a hand? Yeah, well, Roger Guth is on it, and uh, I'm sure a lot of you all know him. And, and uh, a guy named Chris Walters played the piano. Chris is currently touring with the band Alabama. Uh guy named Larry Byron played guitar. He's with Steppenwolf, so... Born to be one. He, uh, he's, he was incredible. Yeah, he did the guitar part on Rain, 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 and his I think his left hand was just about falling off at the end of that thing. But um, let's see. Uh, well, we used Mac McAnally Studio. He was very generous in, in letting us use that. A good friend of mine, Jeff Coffin, um, who plays with Bela Fleck, and the Flecktones, kind of bluegrass jazz, Grammy-winning group. He played sax on a lot of it. We've got a ton of coral reefers on that band, uh, on, on the CD. Nadira Shakur uh, sang the title track, Funky as a Diaper, and she's the soul diva that's going, Funky as a Diaper! 
super. <laughs> <laughs> Tina Gullickson sang on it, uh, and we had uh, for a lot of the schmoopies, all the the schmoopy singers are uh, Amy Lee, Heather Perry, um, Tom Mitchell, uh, John Lovell. We uh, we sang that in a hotel room. That was that was Pete was right next door, so he was <laughs> listening to us be schmoopies all day. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was funny. We recorded uh, Tom Mitchell did the saxophone on uh, from from the Coral Reefer band did the saxophone on uh, Where's the Turkey, and uh, it was funny because when I went up to lobby, everyone was like, "What was that saxophone we were hearing?" <laughs> I mean, the sax is of you all have ever heard a sax up close, but it's loud. <laughs> it's sucker is loud. Yeah, there's some great players on the record. Yeah, CD. So, uh, is there any other Uncle Jim song that you would? Sh- care to share with the world yeah if you got another 12 hours or so i'll play a bunch of them let's hear a couple more yeah yeah okay tape tape is uh one that works well tape doesn't make the flowers grow tape doesn't even say hello tape it's really good at sticking around Tape will fix a boo-boo on your face. Tape's been all the way to outer space. Nothing takes the place of good old tape. Apollo 13. (laughs) Tape that doesn't taste like chocolate milk or sound like jagoochie goochie goochie bilk. Tape, it's the greatest thing since bread. Yummy. Tape sticks to everything like peanut butter and chicken wings. But thank goodness that you got some good old tape. I got a piece of tape stuck to my nose. It wrapped around my eyes, around my ears, and even my toes. I fell into the closet, it stuck to my clothes. My mom called me up for breakfast, now it's all over my cheerio. Whoa, 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 whoa. Tape wrapped around my baseball bat. I even taped the tail of an alley cat. I don't think he liked to my tape one bit. I haven't used tape for fishing yet. You can't catch a fish when your tape's all wet, but you can draw a fish and tape it on the fridge. Tape, it's the greatest thing since bread. Nothing takes the place of good old tape. Thank you, Jim. So, before we go, could you tell the listeners what exactly would you say the the biggest message, other than, of course, positiveness, what's the message in Uncle Jim's music? Well, I I think really uh, it's that we're all in this together, you know. Uh, We're all in this together. And... uh, you know, like I said, it's it's a lot about finding joy and wonder in everyday life. But but you know, more and more, man, I'll tell you, and I've really learned this a lot from Jimmy and just from touring and stuff. And it's amazing when you go around the country and you meet so many different people, kids and and parents and and um, friends and family. And and you know, we all think, oh, you know, nobody nobody ever feels that way, or nobody, oh, they don't understand, or they don't. They don't, they don't know what that's, you know, we, we all have those days. And the more I meet people, the more I'm just convinced that we're, we're all so similar. <laughs> I mean, in a wonderful way, you know, and so I think that's, that's my, my kind of, my thing right now. And I really am, that's part of why I want to make the CD, uh, fun for parents and kids, because it'd be a drag if the parents were bumming, you know, and, and I really believe that whatever is, is truly, uh, good for one person is really truly good for all even if it doesn't feel right sometimes it you know like when daddy said i couldn't have that second foot sunday <laughs> i'm sure the, the world benefited in some way from that that day and 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 so you know i think that's my whole my whole thing is that uh 
is that you know maybe we can find something to laugh about together you know i think that's that's really what jimmy's about too you know when it all comes down to it and we love to party and we all love to get a little bit crazy thank goodness you know and Hey, I, I know that the this would be awful boring if you two guys weren't sitting here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we got to do this stuff together. So uh, I guess that's it. So what would you like to say to everyone? Hello. Hello. <laughs> uh, I, I'd like to say, uh, golly, life is good. Life is good. Life is good. Um, and uh, you know what's interesting? Going back to that Four Seasons Grand in West Palm Beach, you know, isn't it amazing how you can leave a movie and and uh, two different people have two different totally views of it? You know, one mm. person thinks, man, that thing really sucked. That was boring. And then you talk to somebody else and they say, man, that was the greatest movie I've ever seen. And I've pretty much found that I'm going to get out of today what I, what I put into it and what I want to get out of it, uh, no matter what. And the more I try to apply that principle, you know the more fun I have. I mean, it's it's actually amazing to see. I, this is one thing I tell a lot, people a lot about Jimmy Buffett um, that I can say with confidence is that he's he's very much off stage the way he is on stage. I mean, you're just getting Jimmy Buffett. I think that's one reason why he's so successful. A good example of Jimmy's way of thinking is uh, years ago, and I think maybe it was Hurricane Andrew or something, there was a real big hurricane hit in Florida. One of, one of the band members at the time, Nikki Yarling, um, what a sweetheart. Uh, she played violin for, for a while with Jimmy and she had, uh, her house got hit by the hurricane and it, and it was really, you know, tree fell and the whole, you know, and I'm, I'm thinking, I mean, if my house gets hit by a hurricane, I'm going to be kind of bummed. You know, I'm going to think this is not a great thing. You know, well, Jimmy walked in and he said, Hey, case of beer and a chainsaw, let's have a hurricane party. <laughs> 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 Which I just loved, you know. I thought, wow, who would have come up with that? You know, <laughs> case of beer and a chainsaw. Let's have a hurricane party. You know, uh, that is so cool. You know, so so I really think, you know, to me, that's part of creativity. Is just uh, he really has a way of of uh, you just about tell him anything that happened today, and he's gonna he's gonna tell you something positive or fun or just silly or whatever about it, and that's. Um, that's what uh, what I'm trying to do, too. I think that's what we're all trying to do, you know, find a little smile in the sky. That's right. Even when it's raining, we can always look up and there'll be a, a smile in the sky. So let's, before we go, let's hear some rain, rain, rain. Yeah, sure. Some people really hate the rain. All they do is complain about the ugly, stinking weather. But it might get pretty serious if the rain didn't rain on us. Could we keep it together? Rain, 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 rain. Get me some oxygen. Rain, 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 rain. There'd be no sleet or snow to help the big fat wheat to grow to make the donuts with the sparkly tops there'd be no meat or fish to bake no apple pie or chocolate cake you'd gladly eat a couple carrot tops you wouldn't have any fun because there wouldn't be anyone to play with not even a kid who lives down the block there'd be absolutely nothing to eat except a little cream of wheat and i think i'd rather eat a dirty sock yum rain 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 sing along guys rain 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 there wouldn't be any postman or fireman or any kind of animal with a nose or a snoot the mail wouldn't ever come your house just might burn down including all your favorite loot Without the rain, you'd be really thirsty, really, really angry when you'd find out there's no ice cream. Your eyes would probably get so dry you couldn't even cry. You'd say, gosh, I wish that I could scream. Yippee! Rain, 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 rain. snow cones 
or piccolos. <laughs> no smoke cones or cell phones or piccolos or bass trombones to make the music in the park. The rivers would all run dry and you would probably wonder why you were standing in the dark. It's that hydroelectric power that failed that makes those turbines wail that keeps all that electricity going. So when it's time for your show and tell, you'll be doing well when it's a couple of raindrops that you're showing. Rain, 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 rain. What's it called? Rain, 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 rain. Well, Uncle Jim, thank you so much. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate you all coming down, and uh, we'll see you out on the road. Take all right, care. man. Take it easy. Good deal. <laughs>